Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Micro Macro City, the Where's Waldo of murder mystery games. No disclaimer for this one, I borrowed a copy. And a quick note before I start the review, I tried to film a playthrough, but this game was really, really tough to do that for, so instead I filmed a very brief look at the game's tutorial with minimal spoilers, which will be at the end of this review if you want to stay around and check it out. So for my number five, I'm going to start at a pro, and that's the sense that this is a breathing city with lots of little fun stories going on and being told. You've got 16 cases to solve, but apart from those, just scanning over this gigantic board, you'll find all these fun little things. You can track characters that aren't in any of the cases and kind of see what they do throughout the day. Simply put, there's lots of stuff going on, lots of fun details to discover, a hallmark of the books that have kind of the same sort of art style, so I enjoy that a lot. But this fun city comes at a big cost with my number four, a full-on con, and that is how gosh darn gigantic this map is. It didn't really fit on my table. When I played with my family, we just played it on a floor. And it's not just a question of table presence. To actually get around the map and see everything, you have to like walk or crawl or move around. And it presents challenges when playing it cooperatively because it's very tough to get more than maybe two people looking at the same area at the same time. So by default, I would call this best as a one or two player game. I think when you get into three or more, you're going to have trouble kind of getting everyone involved just because you're trying to fit them around this giant map. Well, we're coming back to a full pro for my number three, which are the cards that lead you through the 16 cases, the 16 mysteries in the game. And on first glance, these just tell you what to do. They're just your objectives. They say, oh, now find where this person is. Uh, find where they went after that. Find who they killed. But for me, the real genius of these cards, and it's mentioned in the rule book, is that you can play on advanced mode where you don't use any of these cards except for the kind of inciting incident card. And cases are definitely possible to solve that way. I've done it, where you just kind of figure out all the details on your own. It's actually a lot of fun. So these cards then become not only your objectives, but actually a very subtle clue system. Because you can look at the questions they ask, make sure you're considering the right things, make sure you're going down the right path. If you get stuck, you can find the next card and just glance at it. So the cards almost become kind of a hint system and hold your hand when you need it. It's a really slick design overall. And my number two, also a pro, is heavily connected to these cards because it's the cases themselves. They have a great amount of variety in the stories that are told through these cases in what happens. Now, I do want to put a little disclaimer in here that the game does feature like little cartoony nudity and a lot of cartoonish violence. I played it with my sons, perhaps unwisely, and I'm not sure if they were really ready to learn about murder suicides yet. But those concerns aside, these cases are fun. They have cool twists and turns, fun surprises. Every single one had some silly or shocking aha moment that kept me coming back for more. But for my number one, a very important aspect of the game, I'm going down to a mix, and what I'm focusing on here is how the game plays with time, and kind of the core action you'll be taking while you play. Because the key concept of the game is you can see the same characters involved in a case in different spots, and it represents the timeline of the case, what happened, kind of rewinding or fast forwarding, which is a really cool concept, but it's also, I think, going to be the main potential failure for some games gamers, because basically when you cut right down to it, the entire game, except for a few cool moments, is focused entirely on following these characters either backwards or forwards, just kind of seeing which way they're walking and tracking a little bit, oh there they are again, tracking a little bit more, oh there they are again, tracking a bit more, oh now they got killed. And I'm not saying that's unfun, for us it remained consistently a blast because of the cool cases and the cool stories, but the actual stuff you're doing might be repetitive for some players. Overall, I think Micro Macro Crime City is really cool and I hope hope they come out with more releases in this kind of series. And I think I can pretty strongly recommend this one to people who like escape room games like Unlock or mystery games like Chronicles of Crime. It sort of had that same one-off quick play experience and the sense of accomplishment when you make that logical leap and figure out a case kind of felt similar. I'll also cautiously recommend this one to families. My wife and sons loved it, but as I mentioned earlier, be aware that the content, while small and cartoonish, might be a little too risque for some people. And I will strongly recommend you not play this game if you don't want to stare at maps for a long time, if you've never been a fan of Where is Waldo or those kind of activities, because that's what the game is all about, and if you don't like those, you might not like this. And don't forget, if you want to see me play through a little bit of the game with minimal spoilers, just hang on because it's at the end of this video. 
Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and great googly moogly, what is in front of us on the screen? I'm going to show the tutorial. I'll say that, yes, this is spoilerish, but the tutorial is so darn simple, it's just kind of walking you through how to play the game. I don't think you should mind watching that. And clearly, I can't really act out for you the act of uh, looking for stuff. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to find where something is, then I'm going to like kind of zoom in piece by piece and give you the chance to maybe find it for yourself, and we'll see if that's a fun experience. Who knows? All right, so here is our introductory case. Each case is made up of cards like this. And again, this is kind of a tutorial, so we'll just kind of walk through it. So this is the start card. The lead investigator now turns it over and reads the text on the back. And I will note one negative about playing this solo instead of co-op is that when you're playing it co-op, if you mess up one of the cards, like finding it, uh, whichever player checks it, they get to see if you got the card wrong, and then they can give clues for the other players to still figure it out, so it's not like you just have the solution thrown at you, whereas playing solo, the second you think you know what a card is and you flip it, you're going to find out if you're right or wrong, and you won't really have any chance to like look around for it yourself anymore. Here's our story. Fernando Branca was on the way to the local pub. Upon arrival, he noticed his top hat had disappeared. <gasps> the pub is located in the east of the city between Nepal to and park in the hardware store. Now put this card aside. The next card in the stack describes your first task on a black background. Find the pub. This is Fernando wondering how he lost his top hat. So find the pub. This is your first task. Don't turn this card over. Only once you have found the pub can the lead investigator turn the card over and check whether your answer is correct. So he said east end of the city between Neptune Park and the hardware store. All right, so let's see. Here's uh, an easternish part, kind of like the southeast part of the city. Um, I see, like, some trees over here. There's a kind of parkish thing here. Oh, wait, wait, Looking a bit further north, here is a park with a, <laughs> like, Poseidon statue. So I assume that is Neptune Park. Can I say there's a hardware store? I see, like, a hair cuttery here. Oh, man, I won't lie to you. I spent, like, <laughs> three minutes trying to find the dang hardware store. But look, there's a hammer, so I think that's the hardware store. So if the park's up here, where's the pub? Oh, here we go. Look. Yes, yes, yes. That's him, right? So look, there's our friend himself. Oh no, where is my hat? Very good. That's the pub. Fernando stands in front of it and is surprised that his top hat has disappeared. He still had it on his head when he was at the sausage stand northeast of Neptune Park. He's sure of that. Okay, solve the task on the following card. We gotta find the sausage stand. By the way, I'm having a heck of a time trying to get rid of shadows, so I'm sorry there's so many. But look, here we go. That seems to be a sausage stand. Oh look, there he is, there he is. He's got his hat on still. This is the sausage stand. Fernando can be seen and making his way to the pub from here. At this point, he still had his top hat on his head. Okay, different scenes on the city map show different times during the curse of the story. Cool. All right, so what happened on the way? How was the top hat nicked? All right, let's see if we can't do a little bit of dirty uh, tracking here. So here he is. Wait, wait, what is that? Oh, look at it. I don't know if you guys can see, but some little kids fishing pulled his hat off his head. <laughs> oh, and they do have coordinates if you uh, can't find it for the, like, clue giver once you've had one person look. It happened here on the way to the pub. The two rascals fished the top hat off his head. Okay, the answer you're looking for always refers to a scene on the city map. It can't just be guessed. You need to find evidence on the exact spot on the map. Okay, so where are the culprits sitting with the loot? Last thing to solve. So they probably went, like, into the park, right? Oh, look, look, look. See, there they are laughing at their conquest, and ah... Uh, there we go, right next to the Neptune statue itself. Boom, there they are. The two rascals are sitting on a park bench with their prize. Well done. Now you've learned how to play the game and can attempt to solve more complicated cases. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this little taste of uh, Where's Waldo crime. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.